pioneering spirit to me is about breaking fallow ground in myself and on behalf of others so that the good seeds of life might flourish and bloom on the winds of kindness and change for the good of all to benefit. Hello and welcome. We are back. My name is Joy Carter and this is the second series of the Adoption Arena podcast. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a brilliant, brilliant time. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's just going to be packed with good news, insights, powerful revelations, understanding and knowledge, and a really exciting new theme that I'm really passionate about. It's called The Pioneering Spirit. Now, I chose that title because the pioneering spirit, I believe, is an important part for anyone who has been adopted or fostered, or even if you are an adopted family. Yes, I think you've already realised that life is full of challenges and sometimes you just have to become a pioneer of your own life. But then the good thing is, I believe, is that as we all start to overcome some of those life mountains, we can then choose, if we wish, to become a pioneer to help other people who are maybe going down the same roads and struggling with the same things that we once did. Now, we all know that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And this series is committed to bringing you powerful conversations from other adopted people and pioneers in life who've overcome not just extreme challenges, but have truly gone on to become inspirational and inspiring people, not just in the adoption sphere, but further afield. Now, before I go on, I just have to give a huge shout out to all the guests and crew and everybody who made the first series possible. So what can you expect from this first episode? Well, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the exciting guests, along with playing you a beautiful clip from our very first guest, Laura C, an adoptee and absolutely amazing singer-songwriter from the States. So let's make a start. If you haven't already listened to the first series, I would really recommend you taking a little bit of time and listening back. I mean, we had fantastic speakers such as Chris Atkins from the IAC, the Centre for Adoption and co-founder of her very own organisation, TAG, the Transracial and transnational adoption group, her powerful revelations about overseas and transracial adoption were absolutely brilliant. Please do listen back. And of course, a big love to Jamie Beagerhole from the award-winning blog, Daddy and Dad. And of course, the wonderful Harvey Gallagher, the Chief Executive of the Nationwide Association of Fostering Providers. These are just some of the memorable conversations and episodes that we had. So moving on to where we are going on this voyage, we have got some inspiration and incredible guests for you. This includes Laura C, the much acclaimed American singer-songwriter and adoptee, and we find out more about the power of her music her incredible journey as an adoptee and how she overcame many, many difficult times to now produce music that truly has the power to heal the inner soul. So she'll be talking about that and also we will also be featuring a little bit of her brand new single out called The Return. Now, if you want to find out more about Laura C before I broadcast the full episode in episode two, just visit lauracmusic.com. 
I'm also going to be speaking to Simon Ben from Thriving Adoptees. I just love Simon. He is an adult adoptee and coach to many parents and adopted people. Simon is both candid, funny, insightful, and very, very, very knowledgeable. And he's, he's, he has, is making ripples, quite frankly, all around the world, especially in America. Now, I'm also really honoured to be interviewing Shafali Chandra. Not only is she very passionate about helping others find her own voices and communicate different ways to find your identity, she also has gone on to work with those who are very much marginalised in society to encourage others to find their own truths. She's written various publications. She sits on the board with the National Council of Bernardos for Old Girls and Boys. She's a member of TAG. That's why I met her. She is an amazing voice and you probably recognise her voice at the beginning, sharing her thoughts and what a pioneering spirit is. So enough of me talking. It's time to just jump in now. And I want you to hear a little bit of the very first interview I did with Laura C. And let's just cut straight in as she shares her her challenges and how she begun her life. And please don't forget, you can, of course, follow us on social media. On Twitter, we are at Adoption Arena. And on Instagram, we are at Adoption Arena Podcast. So please do share your thoughts, share with others, let me know your feedback, any ideas, anything creative is all up for grabs. I want to engage with you as much as I can. And also, you can find out even more on our website, or the W's, adoptionarena.com. I was uh, adopted through the state and I was taken directly from my birth mother and put in in California, in the States. And I was taken directly from my birth mother and put in a hospital. And then eventually, I think maybe some foster care before my, so I was like six weeks when I was adopted. But during that time that, uh, that I was separated and I felt was really impactful because I was covered in a rash like uh, when my parents got me, which was like a stress rash. And I, during that time I had had no bonding. So for all that time, I was, you know, never really held and nurtured in the right way. And that those six weeks definitely affected the way I interacted with other people. In fact, I, I had, it explained so much as to why I really only ever bonded to my mother, birth, uh, my adopted mother and father, but like pretty much no one else. And uh, I had a bunch of psychiatrists and therapists in my 20s say that I had uh, separation disorder or what what they call that where you have trouble bonding to people attachment disorder attachment disorder yes yeah. yeah, sorry um yeah so but i had wonderful uh adopted parents who also two years later adopted another child through the state and um i grew up with a a sense that i was chosen they constantly i i don't remember finding out they definitely successfully incorporated the knowledge of me being adopted, the fact that I was adopted into, into my, um, the everyday dialogue. So it wasn't like some, I was 16 or something and some shocking announcement, but I remember a time where I looked in the mirror and I was starting to have emotions that were confusing that And I remember this voice telling me, you're not allowed to be, um, you're not allowed to have any kind, these kind of feelings because you're, 
your parents, you the gratitude you need to have towards your parents for adopting you. And so I really compartmentalized and shut down that those emotions, but they eventually come out and they manifest in other ways because that's those emotions are energy that I was stuffing, stuffing, stuffing because I, I was grateful to my parents that adopted me. And I really wanted to be the good child um, so that they would continue to love me, which was just a dialogue I built in a frame, a framework that I built up in my own mind. You know, it absolutely, they offered unconditional love. So, um, but I do remember having a recurring dream over and over of me flying over the earth looking for my birth mother and um i just never shared that because i didn't want them to feel sad or to know that i felt disconnected and there that there was a void there that i spent my life trying to fill with all sorts of yeah. all sorts of false yeah the coping mechanisms that I think we yeah. all are very much aware of and it's funny because when you start peeling back your behavior especially as an adult and you realize that you weren't just in the naughty corner or you weren't just shut down for a reason it's because of the as you said we you know the first thousand days they now believe for a child and a child's development is absolutely crucial and that mm. can basically set the whole life trajectory of their emotions and security and developmental abilities, learning capabilities. If that's damaged in any way, it's very easy to become autistic or to have major learning problems because you're just broken, aren't you? You're broken at birth, which you know that is the nature of adoption. Adoption is a break. So when was it, do you feel that um, you felt as though you really wanted to get help? You know, was there, was there a moment where you thought, right, I, I need to start to do some work on this? Well, in my 20s, I spent every day being uh, either filling it with some substance because that was the way that I coped was using drugs and alcohol. And it, when I was, this is fascinating when I was, and I really want to know from other adoptees if this is a thread, a common thread, because I've never seen the research. I dis I decided that I wanted to search for my birth family at in my mid 20s I began having um, female issues and I ended up developing tumors on my ovaries that had to, had to be removed and I really do believe there is a connection because now that we understand the mind body connection, all that energy. So that I had suppressed found itself in of all places, ovaries, which have to do with birthing and have to do with reproduction and have to do with mother issues. And so I find that fascinating that it, that manifested and that's at age 27 is when I hired a private detective to track down my birth mother. Wow, yeah, because it, it's interesting, isn't it, how the physical, mens, you know, the, the, the physical manifestation of what we yep. suffer um, in our brain, in our bodies, you know, but the, the body can't contain the trauma, can it? So it then affects the physical, which then is disease, sickness, um, um, and then, of course, you know, we've all got that sort of cycle, isn't there's like a cycle of abuse um, as you try to just grapple with these issues of identity. Um, did you ever sort of meet other adoptees? You know, so that one of your siblings was adopted, I mean, um, as well. Yeah. Did, how did that help? Did that help you at all? Um, I didn't end up meeting other adoptees until I was much older and was actually um, ministering to other adoptees. Um, I, I felt like a kind of like a, I had a very strange mix of feeling like a freak that I was adopted because every doctor that would ask me about your history, you know, you have no idea. You're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But then I also had a weird thing that my parents built in, which was almost like pride, because as an artist and as a musician, you you never want to be like the norm. And so I had this kind of like 
um, dichotomy of like feeling worthless and unloved, even that def defied reason, right? Because it defied my situation. I had a lot of love, but this was still there. And yet this weird kind of pride that, well, at least I'm different and unique because I've always felt different and I've always felt set apart in some way, so. Yeah, because it's funny, isn't it? there's, there's actually advantages, I think, to being adopted as well, because if you do, you are self-formed, you realise you, you will never fit in, because you're never going to fit in at home, mm -hmm. so, so you develop a very strong character. I always felt I was very strong on the external side, people would think I was unbreakable, but inside I was completely shattered and broken, and trying to deal with those constant complexities of just brokenness daily emotionally, but then also on the exterior being hard and tough. Yeah. To be. Um, but there's always a point when that that is a very dangerous um, um, you know, sort of sort of yo-yo effect, isn't it, where it just will break because you can't be up and down all the time, can you? So 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 have you ever sought any sort of help, you know, to actually deal with you know, how, 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 how did you, you find your inner peace? Um, my parents sent me to some brief therapy in my teens because I was, I must have been manifesting some kind of sadness or confusion. And, but I don't really remember that being helpful. Music was always my therapy. So it was complete cathartic. Like at age eight, I started writing and I, I would actually begin writing songs to figure out how I was feeling. Like I wouldn't have the language consciously. So I would write songs and it, I would look at it and I would be like, huh, that's what I'm going through. Okay. And so God gave me music as a gift because it really was um, healing. And because music I was recognized for my gifting at a very young age. That also helped my self-esteem because I always got a lot of um, support for my gifting um, and, you know, began like recording and when I was really young. Um, so that, that was very, very, very helpful. Um, and then of course I self-medicated in my twenties was the way that I coped. Um, but also my earliest memory was when I was, believe it or not, a one and a half, cause I just had this memory and my parents said that, that can't be possible. You were like one and a half, but I've always felt that God was with me. And this early memory, I've never felt like I was alone. I felt different, set apart, kind of broken, but never alone which was very strange. Um, my earliest memory was being in, a, I knew it was a hospital and I can remember where the door was. There was a window there. And I remember being in something that had like a crib or something that had a covering on it. And I remember seeing light, a, like a ray of light or a, like a ball of light um, come to me at what turned out to be one and a half. And I guess I was very sick when I was one and a half and I was put in a hospital and they put this, I, they put this tent over me. And, but I, I really believe that even then God was ministering to me and letting me know that he was with me and I never really felt alone. So that was very important to me. That's just, that's just incredible because I, I think that's the hardest thing. I mean, I've struggled my whole life with isolation. Mm. And I've never really been able to, and even now I still feel, feel quite isolated in many ways because I've got so used to being isolated. Um, mm. Like when we had obviously COVID and lockdown, um, I felt, well, good, you know, because I, 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 yeah. I, still, I still grapple with, I still struggle with feeling on my own. Um, mm. And, but I now know how to stop that cycle where I completely used to just shatter and go off on a massive, you know, um, sort of self-destruction pit. I don't do that now, but I, but I do have to be careful of that sometimes coming up in me. So, um, 
So, because 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 you said you're a Christian, do, do you find that your faith has helped you? You know, maybe not. You know, sort of cope with all the issues. Well, I absolutely. I mean, I would not consider myself a traditional Christian um, in the sense that like part of a denomination and a church goer, so not a religious Christian. Um, but I have had deep, intimate, personal encounters with love, with the God of love. And those encounters gave me uh, a cognitive dissonance in the sense that the God that I, of the the God that I was taught versus the God that I encountered was different. And so I choose to believe in the God that I encountered because no one can take away what you've actually encountered. And those encounters with love healed so much, healed all the broken places. So yeah. yes, my yeah. faith is everything yeah it's, it's 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 amazing isn't it because you do need that sort of pivotal point isn't it there's the point you need to have something when you're for it's like i i always see it as being like a, like you're attached to something like you're being on the map and maybe you're attached to the um the, a mast and the ship's going left and right but you need to be anchored to something yes. that you can hang on to when you're going through the stormy seasons in life um otherwise you can just completely go under um so Absolutely. So you obviously you were growing up and you, there was always the love and the support um, and then, you know, obviously finding the Lord. Because I know your music is very, you know, you, you space from the soul, isn't it? You know, you really do sing what you see, don't you? You know, we spoke earlier. Um, and, and and do you feel that your music can actually heal people? You know, where do you know, do you think music, you know, has actually obviously healed your heart? But do you feel it, it can really help people, you know, find that inner peace? Well, we've had a lot of testimonies of, of people that have received uh, both physical and emotional healing from the music. So that's been really, really beautiful. And um, I, because I was healed from, from, then I can then release that to others. And so, you know, I just believe that on our voice, our DNA is carried on our voice and everything we've gone through um, is revealed. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been definitely healed by the music that I've been given and engaging time in the presence of God and just letting him surround me with healing frequencies that I then in turn share with others so and i'm exploring now even um some really ancient keys of uh some real ancient frequency keys uh, like solfagio frequencies and uh other things that god is leading me toward to to bring into the music as well um so i'm really excited about that I could just listen to Laura all day. She just makes everything completely feel like you can do it. She's just brilliant. I can't wait for you to hear the full episode. Tune in. Remember, we are fortnightly, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Please subscribe, tell your friends, get involved. And don't forget, you can also follow us on all the social media platforms on Twitter at Adoption Arena or Instagram at Adoption Arena podcast. Keep your comments coming or of course just drop us an email hello at adoptionarena.com or just visit the website to get involved with some of the other projects we've got coming on later on this year. You've been absolutely amazing. Thank you for sending in your questions and for giving donations as well. Remember every single penny um that we get makes this podcast affordable and and doable and i just want to keep producing more of these because there's still so much for us to discuss listen have a brilliant and very safe couple of weeks and i will catch up with you in two weeks from today 
loads of love and don't forget adoption arena is a sound pathway into a great future a pioneering spirit to me is about breaking fallow ground in myself and on behalf of others so that the good seeds of life might flourish and bloom on the winds of kindness and change for the good of all to benefit. <laughs>